with the ESL Hearthstone Legendary Series. Hope you guys didn't miss us too badly. Uh, we are going to have our semifinal matches coming up, and then we have our top two determine who's going to get an invite back to next week. Yes, we do. And I believe the first match coming up is Backspace versus Waifu, which is going to be a really exciting matchup. Yeah. Waifu has done really great things and uh, has impressed us the past couple of days. Of course, he did make it all the way through that open bracket, the, uh, the Sunday Challenger Cup which is uh, usually about 500 players every week. Uh, it's open to sign up. All you need is a North American account. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can play a lot of people, get some tournament experience under your belt, and maybe even make it to the ESL Legendary Series. It's cool stuff. That's right. And uh, Waifu, I believe, is the only player that's also uh, selecting Hunter. Yes. Like he oh, sorry, Backspace has Hunter, too. Well, these are the two only players that are playing Hunter. Right, I meant remaining in the top four, but I forgot that uh, Backspace also had a Hunter too. Yeah, You're right. It's been it was also at the beginning of the day, so kind of forgot about that one. Uh, the differences in the lineup are pretty drastic. Warlock and Priest, as opposed to Warrior and Paladin, and those are two very different types of uh, archetypes that you go right. The yeah, Paladin is very control oriented. Warrior is super late game oriented as well, but Hunter is super aggressive. Yes. I like this mix that, I like the players that bring a mix. They bring a mixture of of control classes and a mixture of aggressive classes because it sort of shores up your bad matchups and, and gives you a better chance of, of, of putting one of your decks into a better matchup. Now, Hunter, um, it can be a little rough because if they, nowadays at least, Hunter isn't quite as good at, against the control matchups as it once was, but it still has a chance to take games off of anything. Yeah, I think this is pretty exciting to see Backspace get to the top four at the moment, too. As it looks like he's a little tired. Uh, I guess we all are. It's been a long day, but no one more tired than Waifu. <laughs> I think it's like 5 a.m. for him over I there. I think even later. I think it's like the sun might even be rising over there. So. Oh, the sun is definitely coming up soon. Yeah. So he's... Uh, so I, This I, is a couple days in a row. This I know happened. Backspace, it's, it's getting a little bit late. It's 7 p.m. And I know us old-timers here have to be calling it in soon, but... You know, you can keep it together. It's been a while since we've seen Paladin since the beginning of the day, and it's going to be exciting since... Uh, no, actually, we saw a dog play Paladin, too, so we've been seeing it all parts of the day. But Shield and Minibot is one of those cards where you look and say, you know what, that's okay, but when you play with it, it's like, wow, actually has such good synergy. If you have Sword of Justice, if you're playing yep. those builds, excellent. Uh, if you play Cog Hammer, lots of value. It trades on turn two, and you play on turn three with the Cog Hammer. Yeah. Great stuff. I think Cog Hammer. I don't know if you could even consider it underrated because there's a lot of people that are very adamant about how great it is. Uh, but I think it's underrated. Well played. Sir. <laughs> well played. Well, uh, Divine Shield in general is just so powerful when um, in in the right situations where like you can't uh, pick up a favorable trade. Yeah. And even here, where like Backspace can just start trickling in damage. And he has a quality and consecration, so he shouldn't be afraid of pressing in damage too for, too much. Yeah. Unless he's worried about a board clear, because he has the ultimate say. Like even if his opponent puts up the biggest walls of giant, like say it's day nine's Echo of Medivh deck, <laughs> there's seven molten giants and a and a sheep. You can just a quality consecrate and get past all of it. Echo of Medivh on molten giants, the dream. That really was a crazy, crazy board. Yeah, board. It yeah. was wild. Wild. Backspace is playing this pretty aggressively. Looks like he's going to be charging face, and for good reason, like we said. He's got the equality consecration. He could hold off on one attack. I mean, he would have four health and five mana, so he only could play Molten Giants for four and not taunt up. Yeah, it's very awkward. But then you also want to consider, even if he does taunt up, and I also have consecration and quality. Yeah. Oh, I guess you can't play it on turn five yet. So you got the, you definitely have to hold off, I guess. Yeah. Ah, oh, no fear. He's got the one ones. Absolutely no fear. Yeah. I wouldn't have fear either in that situation, to be honest. You know, um, one thing you have to consider is how much damage do I have remaining? That's true. Paladins definitely don't have burst. So it's like if I put him that low, if I don't attack. Do I have enough damage to even kill him, assuming I do the equality consecration combo? Yeah. And this turn feels a little bit weird, because you most likely just going to hear a power pass. This? Yeah. I think you're going to call him the mailman. The bomb lobber? 
What's that gonna do? It puts a 3-3 on the board. You might even kill off the one, the the Twilight Drake. That's true. <laughs> Boom! From downtown. That's a that's a four pointer. <laughs> it I is. mean, he wouldn't. <laughs> he's got some range on him. It's effectively. Well, he got fouled on the play, so he got he got the free throw. Okay, I see. NBA jokes. <laughs> Waifu, does he trade? Yes, he does. Well aware of the p capability of equality and consecration. Ooh, pyromancer and equality. Yes, that allows good. him to play a hero power. It seems like when there's an opportunity for backspace to get the consecration with equality, he always picks up the pyromancer. Yeah, I like that because. Uh, it's more mana efficient, and it's basically the same effect. Well, actually, I think it might be a little different if he has a board. If he, when his board is empty, yeah, it makes sense. But gotta say, man, these, this game, these games are so back and forth and tightrope. Yeah. Sylvanas off the top for backspace, especially this matchup. You don't, you wouldn't think that Paladin versus Handlock would be like this fast paced. But these guys are making quick turns. The handlock's already low health. I guess it doesn't take that long for that to happen. But sure, sure. Uh, there's very high impact turns a lot earlier than you would expect with this matchup. Well, Waifu doesn't draw any silence. And uh, even though this game, like you said, has escalated pretty quickly, yeah, it can slow down if um, if there's nothing else that can be done about it. Like say he the Sylvanas doesn't steal anything worthwhile if there's ancient watchers. Uh, you still can't exactly kill the handlock yet. What but do you do here? Do you just flood the board? I think so. Ancient Watcher, Ancient Watcher, Defender of Argus? Mm hmm But I think don't you wanna attack first before you defender? Oh, he's not gonna he's gonna leave Sylvanas up on the board. Oh man. Danger, stranger. Stranger danger. <laughs> Alright, well, he attacks. What is he going to take? Oh! <laughs> wow. You know what? Isn't this vindication? Well, actually, this is bad because backspace... Uh, well, first of all, it's bad. Not bad for like in the sense where like backspace uh, misplay here. It's like bad because um, backspace... This happened to him earlier when... His, he had four Silverhand recruits and Sylvanas, and somehow it still was Tyrion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me think. It's like I can't, I can't even begin to fathom what's going on <laughs> through his mind. How unlucky he is. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm never playing Paladin in a tournament again. I'm never playing Sylvanas in Paladin. Well, no, it was the opponent Sylvanas, so. Yeah, that's worst case scenario right I mean, there. There's nothing is, that uh, this gets him. This is pretty one-sided karma, honestly. Think. Yeah. You're thinking about. Lay on hands to try and dig deeper into the deck. It's starting to get pretty scary. I would just plop down Turian. Turian is pretty strong as an option here. Consecration. Huh. That is a very interesting play. I'm not sure I understand depth of that play what okay. what does he put anything in range for anything that would have died I'm very baffled I'm baffled right now for well my thinking was that he was gonna use the giant to kill off the ancient watcher okay so it would have been a one three yeah but even then is that okay <laughs> Oh, now, it's a you know what it also could be? It could be that he feels like he doesn't have time to play Consecration any other moment. Because the next turn is going to be dedicated to Tyrion. And, um, or maybe setting up for a sniper rag. On what? Rag would have killed everybody. On his face. Oh, you're right. Oh, you're right. You're totally right. He was at nine. No, I know. You said that quite facetiously. Like, you looked at me very coy, like, as if that was supposed to be a joke. But I think that's exactly what Backspace was doing. No, I think that was a legitimate. Because th that's the only explanation I can think of of why. No, you but the way you looked at me, dude, you're like, totally like, yeah, I'm trolling. What if you just. No, said that was up my. Sniper rag. And I'm th like, that was my. Oh, man, that was really good. You're that right. Was, that was my check out what I just thought of, Frodan face. 
All right, well, uh, now that's not a possibility. Well, uh, he can still play Tyrion here. Yes. And hopefully his opponent doesn't have an answer. Slash, if he does, it's not a silence, so he can still get the weapon to start attacking the face. Yep. Well, what is he going to draw? He doesn't have his card draw mechanic anymore. Oh! Oh, oh man. Clutch. You have to feel bad for backspace. That's clutch. He's, his paladin games have been so unlucky. Yeah. You can even utilize Mortal Coil here. If you so choose. And you can use anti kill bot and still. No, you can't. Yeah, and still get an infernal. He's going to choose a different play, though. He's going all in on the board. Yeah, I would have attacked the Tyrion, used uh, the Defender of Argus and the Mortal Coil to he's heal pushing it, and then anti kill bot. Yeah. So he sets up for lethal next turn. He knows uh, Consecration has been used. So he knows his opponent's chances of clearing are very much lower. Lay on hands to draw three cards. Only option right now. Needs to pick up something else. What can he pick up to get him out of this? Sun Fury Protector? E no. Six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen damage on the board if he kills his Sludge Doctor. Okay. Tyrion still manages to get value despite taking a battle cry and killing off yeah. the first body. Pretty good. Molten Giant's a dead draw. But Waifu can... I mean, he can start really taking his time here because it's very clear his opponent doesn't have a very clear uh, good response. Yeah. Mortal Coil. Uh, yeah. You gotta use, utilize that Mortal Coil whenever you can and, at this uh, stage. Kill off the shield of bot Inferno and... And Farseer. Yeah, I'm not sure. He's only been through one equality, but there's no way that he can draw into a quality and, and anything else next turn. I like it. You know what? Just going really aggressive. Yeah. It's not like his opponent can Shadow Flame. All right, well, this is... I'm not sure what Backspace can draw here that's going to get him out of this situation. He has the Guardian of Kings. I don't. That wouldn't bring him anywhere near out of lethal range, though. Yeah, and he can see. At this point, Waifu was just debating whether or not he wants to play the Farseer, but Backspace just has no more patience for it. He's like, I, yeah. I'm not going to win this game. Yeah. So Get in out while you can, not not staying in a, in a game that you're almost for sure that you're going to lose. Move on to the next one. I mean, it seemed like Backspace was pretty upset, too, based yeah. off like, uh, well, you know what, screw it, I don't want to just play this game. It's a waste of my time. It's like yeah. one of those things where it's like, well, either if he's not upset, he stops himself before he gets upset. Yeah. You know, where it's like, it's better if he left at that stage. Yeah. I just, you know, because he didn't have, like, a quality, and, and he was just waiting for a Pyromancer or, or a quality in Consecration. Yeah. Um, it was just, like, no chance to win from that spot. All right, well, next match is going to be Hunter Mirror. And we've seen both of these guys, Hunter. Not too much variation in Hunter, in general. So, this guy's decks are pretty similar. The one tech that's really great in the Hunter vs. Hunter matchup is that, that flare. That now two-mana flare. So I don't think we've seen a flare from either either of these guys just yet. Nah, no one's playing flare. It's pretty mana inefficient. Yeah. Um, it's solely to destroy secrets now, which is what Blizzard wanted. They wanted flare to be counterplay, not yeah. as an auto include because it's so good. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, backspace. We know that he has. I think it was backspace that has sludge belchers. No, he had hound masters. Hound masters can make a difference. I'm not sure if he has sludge belchers in the deck. Uh, but whoever has like those taunts that can swing the matchups and force uh, comebacks, yeah. Like, but just by having taunts, you can pull a lot of pressure away from the face, and then start uh, coming back on the board presence. Yeah, both guys here with a pretty great start. Undertaker plus a death rattle one drop. Yeah, but I favor the person who goes first almost every time. Yeah. Yep. Unless he has a bad follow up. No, <laughs> he is... does not have a bad follow up at all. That's a great follow up. And uh, favor the person that goes first, especially if they have three one drops. Yeah, because now um, you can't really get ahead of that Undertaker. You have to play this coin with another one drop because you need to buff it. Yeah. But you don't have an opportunity to strike back because you just use your coin. So if you draw Eagle or Hern Bow, it won't matter. Yeah. Both these guys have decent curves, though. I mean, yeah. two, two mana. Uh, a play on turn two plus a play on turn three, so. Right. 
Um, but the advantage again, now goes to the board, like back to see his board control. Yeah. Now, do you um, you like pop the trap? Right? Oh, I guess you don't have to. You just go for the animal companion. Oh, this is what I was afraid of. I was like, well, what if he gets huffer? Yeah. Okay. What trap is this gonna be? Is it explosive trap? That's gonna be a big deal if it is. Oh, oh, oh. Wow. Wow. that's nice. Okay, but then Backspace knows he's gonna kill off this two for the yeah. Yeah, like because of it's the possibility of explosive trap, you have to be really cautious. But what if it's freezing trap and he throws us in and oh, then he just uh, uh, ex uh, equal horn bow. True, and he has board and he he can address whatever's on the board. Little nerve wracking, but uh, in the end, he's gonna find out this is the right choice. If he chooses to go for it, he's still hesitating. He has a, he made a motion as if he wanted to kill off this Leoc. Yeah, I think he's gonna realize though. Uh, it might be a little bit uh, tough to make the decision at first, but um, even if it is freezing trap, like you said, you can still eagle horn bow. But maybe he has a different set of plays in mind. Maybe he wants to utilize his mana more efficiently. Oh, he's also. Uh, I, th I think he's wondering about snake trap too. Oh. oh. Man. Yikes. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He has to wait for the... Mm. Okay. That's rough. Yep. Really bad spot for backspace. And he's got... It's hard, you know. Well, how do you anticipate those traps? Because if, it it's, it's, if it is freezing trap, um, that 1-1 one -one comes back to your hand gives you so much damage. Yeah. Because then you you play Eagle Horn Bow, you do seven to the face. Yeah. Like it's so easy for us to just like watch and be like, yeah, of course, Beck. Yeah. Derp. <laughs> but uh, it's it's not easy to make those calls when no. you're in those spots. Well, that was my first instinct too. Was to uh, was like, oh, what if it's freezing trap? Then I I in that situation without being able to see both sides, I might have done the same play that he did. Because Snake Trap would have been devastating as well because he had a Leon wow. on the board. That's uh, 12 damage on the board. Wow. And he's locked out from spells. So there's no way he can... Nothing that... Yeah. Well, I mean, he can clear off the Leoc here, but then that would still be... Well, I think that might be his best option to play high main and clear the, the Leoc. Yeah. I mean, 7 wouldn't have a beast, so... Would only be a three damage kill command in hand, so we'd have thirteen damage. Next turn, he has the availability of using Unleash the Hounds with Kill Command. Oh yeah, that's a really great option. So with that knowledge, should he attack the face? Four, nine, eleven. Yeah, yes, actually, that should be. That would. You, set does that him mean up? you should hero power here, and you shouldn't play the high main? You should hero power and play the the, the, the Bludgeon Raptor. Blood and Raptor. Oh my gosh. This is a good spot here by Backspace. Good eye. This is probably going to be, be his best chance of winning because if he, if he Eagle Horn bows the Leoc, he's just doing damage control. And if you get to the point where you're just doing damage control in a mirror matchup, in a hunter mirror matchup, that means you're almost certainly going to die. You're going to be yeah, dead. It's very easy to fall behind. Yeah. This play can get punished, but at the same Six, time... 12, 7. Oh, he's one damage off people. Oh no, he's got lethal. The oh, Eagle Horn Bow. Oh, man. Oh, jeez. Well, the risk from backspace does not pay off. Ex that's so rough. Exact lethal. Yeah. Exact seas. It just happens. I was counting like kill command hero power, but the Eagle Horn Bow was the final point of damage that he needed. And uh, Wave Root jumps out to a 2 0 lead super quickly. Very quickly, yeah. Super quickly. And backspace has to and be it, a little bit tilted right now. It's not because of matchups, like of unlucky matchups where it's like. The hunter just goes into against. Um, what's hunter favored against nowadays? <laughs> I guess I guess Nothing. shamans, <laughs> right? Like shamans that can't heal. But I don't know. Uh, I think shamans. There's uh, some crazy variations of mech shamans. Assuming that hunter are tough was like to... falling, or like you know the his handlock falls against priest or something. Instead, yeah. it's going to be tough matchups all around. Backspace needs to win three in a row here. Y three in a row. You know things have changed when. The sentence that came out of your mouth was, what is Hunter even favored against anymore? But, uh, yep, Priest vs. Warrior coming up next.
We've seen a lot of this matchup today. This has probably been one of the, the more popular matchups that we've seen today, two of the more popular decks that we've seen today. Um, and Backspace, this is a tough task to be down 2-0 and have to come back and win three games in a row to make it past, especially in the blind pick. You have to really choose the right deck in, in, in those situations coming on top. But yeah. he's got to make it through this priest first. Wafu's played well. He's played well. Uh, Backspace well. has also gotten pretty unlucky, to be quite fair. Uh, he's had fate in his own hands a couple times, most notably that explosive trap. So that way he lost board control. He could have easily cashed in on it in a much better way. Yeah. But, uh, of course, he doesn't know what we know. And uh, that's just very painful if you're cheering for backspace, which is one of, this is one of his first tournament appearances since he joined Archon. Yeah. People are looking at him to make a splash. Yeah, he's got very sad eyes. I don't know if that's just right now or if that's they're very sentimental. When you look into them, you feel a lot of emotions. Yeah, it's definitely something that you could grayscale, put black and white. Yeah. Put like memoirs of a jaded card player. Yes. In fact, <laughs> the life of Backspace. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be a good one to watch. One to watch, but... Uh, Wave has had a hard time deciding what he wants to mulligan away. Well, Backspace has what been... I don't, I don't really like keeping sh uh, like Shadow Madness. I like keeping Circle Feeling sometimes. I like keeping Shadow Word Pain. Yeah, Shadow Word Pain is fine. Shadow Madness is uh, it's like meh. You threw away Shadow Word Pain. I think you want minions to start off too. But being able to just completely take away... Uh, sometimes um, I keep Circle of Healing on the off chance that you get Injured Blade Master. Okay. Because that start is a really good way to punish priests or to warriors. punish warriors. Yeah. Gets rid of the possibility of execute. Shadow or Pain is a little too reactive. You can do the same thing with um, the Dark Cultist. Dark Cultist is a Shadow or Pain, pretty much, for whatever is low, low attack, low health. Yeah, that's true. But Shadow or Pain also gets eaten up. Yeah, it kills off the Acolyte. Yeah. It's a pretty good start. Also has the Death Bite as a follow-up for this. Uh, if there was, like, another creature played. Here we go, oh. Thought Steal. Wow, BGH <laughs> is a big deal. Shield uh, Slam's a big Shield deal. Shield Slam, not that much. Shield Slam is basically a whirlwind when it comes down to py Pyromancer. Yeah. Or if he Thought Steals... Oh, well, speaking of Pyromancer, we saw earlier two Shield Blocks for Thought Steal, so a you always pass. like to see that. Well, of course, uh, this might prompt Waifu to play the... Uh, the cool Taskmaster. But yep. by doing so, the Shadow Madness gets value. Yeah, if, if he passed on this turn, then why would he keep something to deal with the Acolyte of Pain for the next turn? So right. I don't like going for the shadow, for the Cruel Taskmaster because you kind of know that the Priest is baiting you into going for the Cruel Taskmaster play because they, you know that they're going to have Shadow Madness if they pass right. on that turn. Then he's gonna try to take it with Cabal Shadow Priest the following turn. Yeah. Whoa! What? Uh, the? Okay, I haven't seen Corcoran Elite in Warrior in six months. Yeah. That is really what? weird, but really cool. I, I think Because that, no one's gonna be expecting it. I think Piloted Shredder is like a better choice though, especially in the Control Warrior. Same stats, but I think it's a, a better a better effect that the card has than charge. I'm not sure how useful a charge is a lot of times. Especially since Quirk on Elite doesn't trade very well into like a sledge belcher. It's not always the most useful, but the surprise yeah. factor, you're right though, could could catch some people off guard. They may not be expecting it or playing around it. Yeah, backspace uh definitely trying to wait for the value on the Shadow Madness being able to clear off the board. And Waifu, how does he respond? Is it Finally, time to unleash the surprise. <laughs> Perhaps is it, it time is. to fight for the war chief. I think so. When else are you going to? On an empty board, I think would probably be the best. You can also pass. Not a big deal. But what? What are you going to save that cork on elite for? The finishing potential. Like you, Alex Straza, and then it's it's like you Gromosh, and he he doesn't expect it, and then you have like another. Core Connolly that you can add damage to in case you don't have Gromosh. Or you have to use Gromosh for removal. There's gotta be a better card for that situation. 
like the Uroi. Yeah. I, you know what? I I, I want to say yes and absolutely validate your feelings, but I just can't really. <laughs> Why can't you validate my feelings, Frodo? Ooh. Ah, he's got the Pyromancer, so he can't circle of healing with this injured Blade Master. He's also at full card, so it's not as simple as like, well, we'll just drop a Northshire Cleric and heal and draw a card. Yeah. Oh, also he's at full hand, so he needs to drop something. He might just drop his Injured Blade Master, heal it, and then start attacking. Yeah. Either way, something's going to survive the next turn, but that's the best play. Every single one of his cards is situational besides that. He can actually do both. Uh... Okay, so he's going to drop another... Uh, okay. Drop another minion. Okay. This is good. Ensuring that two of his creatures survive. It's like a make a tough choice about what you want to kill. Now, now you have an opportunity to play Corcon Elite. Corcon Elite to smash the North Shire. Boom. Yeah. You know what it is? It's basically a mortal strike that might be able to get more two strikes out, more than uh, two times. Oh, Verdan, I think he's gonna. T I think he's gonna steal this Corcon Elite. Think so? I think he is. I think he's gonna take it. Why wouldn't you take it? Cause you don't need to. What else are you gonna do? I guess you could injured Blade Master and heal it up. That's a good play too. I mean you can steal, you're right. It's just you're just think about what you want to do in this matchup though. If if your opponent plays Karen, you I wanna steal, steal it. things. If he plays the pilot shredder, you steal it. If he, if he has um if he has a sludge belcher, you steal it. Like you have the combo of Shrink Master plus the Cabal Shadow Priest, which reduces the attack to two. Whatever. No, well, I mean, what one maybe? If it's Gorkon Elite, two. That's what I was. Right, wondering. and then you just steal it. We have to explain, man. Sometimes. Okay. Some people don't. They're new to GBG, and they're like, "What's that card?" Okay. Yeah, he's just gonna steal it. Not everyone knows everything about Hearthstone like you, TJ. That's a shame. I don't even know everything about Hearthstone. Like the uh, what was that puzzle that we had earlier? If you shadow step a Lotheb, <laughs> that I still it's not don't even know. A puzzle really. It's a little bit of a puzzle. Yeah, I'm, I'm more of a fan of just playing defensive, uh, saving this combination. You're in for the long haul. We're yeah. in this together. Yeah, Sludge Belcher is probably the best target for the Shrinkmeister. Cabal Shadow. Most Bruce. likely, short of a, a Karen, Karen as or well. Ysera. Ysera. Whoa. Next. Dream level. big. Yeah. <laughs> Why stop at a Corcon Elite? You've changed me, Rodan. He's still waiting on a Holy Nova, too. Just like he has easy clear. Yeah. His BGH coming out is fine because there's nothing, but I think he's also scared about the possibility of a uh, stolen big creature. Yeah. Or even mind control. Like, if he mind controls like Ragnaros, he needs a way to answer it. Well, that sounded a very useful draw, so this doesn't really change much from his last play, except now he just doesn't have an injured Blade Master. Well, now you steal it. Or maybe you just remove it, like you shrink Meister and then Shadow or Pain. Hmm. Sad face. If you're gonna. Yeah. If you're gonna get rid of your Shrink Master, you might as well use it to steal something. <laughs> that's, that's a folly that a lot of. Players might make. If I just, it's so new, Frodan. I just want to steal things. So if you take it and you attack two damage to the face, yeah. What do you gain from it? I think I think I'm more in favor of just removing it. Yeah. And Cabal Shadow Priest, he still hasn't seen armor. Or he's only seen one accolade paint. Yeah. He still hasn't seen armor. He hasn't. He has a shield slam. The this. the reasonable side of my brain says Shadowward Pain. The side of my brain that is not reasonable at all that only wants to steal things. Says steal it. Gotcha. The kleptomania. Yeah. Bird. <laughs> Great minds think alike. Yeah, so that's where my laundry change went. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let's see. Backspace trying to figure out if he can find a way to to like maneuver around here so he can find uh, he can find a way to be aggressive. The yeah. problem is you're always scared about whether or not your opponent can just simply steal this Ragnaros. Yeah. Which he can. 
Yep, he totally can. And that's where BGH comes back, because the BGH fights back for value yeah. against mind control. That damage is not even that bad, to be honest. Yeah. Has he been through both cruel taskmasters? Not sure. Mm. Not well, sure. I, I think he might not want to mind control this turn. No, he uh, might not even want to shadow where death. I think Vulgin can come out here. So if you play Vulgin or even BGH. Yeah, but you know there's bigger targets like Alex Straza as well. Yeah. Like Vulgin's a is a tempo play because like Vulgin gets to steal the health. Yeah. Trade the minion and then you get to heal up. Yeah. So you get to do more actions. And later on in the game, you might not have a creature to be able to trade after you use Vulgin. Yeah, it's just like a really powerful minion. It's a Keltizad without the effect. Yeah, uh, it's really really strong. Backspace is three points off of lethal. Hmm. And Vulgin just is he's stat his stats are just so good. You can't BGH that. Oh man. Well you could Explosive Sheep hit the Vulgin throw down unstable. Okay, so if you explosive sheep and then do that much damage. Or just throw down explosive sheep. I guess you don't care if it gets stolen by Cabal, right? <laughs> it's the same thing. same thing. Literally the same thing. And I guess not playing the Unstable Ghoul is good because you save that for value later on, maybe with Acolytes or Armorsmiths, and you actually do care if Unstable Ghoul is stolen by Cabal. Not as much as something else. Well, it does because it, it stops the, the attack from the weapon. Yeah. But he did have a board clear. If he went for the unstable ghoul, because it would have damaged the Vulgin for three damage. And then he would have done five. So, in fact, he could have killed off Vulgin if he played the unstable ghoul too. Yeah, that's what I... Interesting. But I think Backspace is also trying to plan out to not use his weapon charge if he doesn't need to. Yeah. The weapon charge is his only activator for Gromash. Yep. He's got to hold on to that thing for dear life. It doesn't feel Wei really Fu nice. really wants to heal himself, but if he doesn't, then he risks getting armored up shield slam on Vulgin. Yeah. I think you armor, I think you heal. I think you heal Vulgin. Uh huh. Uh. Oh. Oh, he's playing really safe and cautious. Wow, and last minute decides to throw out the Arcanized Soul Priest. Yeah, he wants to bait out that, um... The Death Spite. The, the Death Spite. Ooh, yeah. Backspace now has a very <laughs> large incentive to do so. How do you do this? Do you attack the Vulgin in hopes that the bomb hits one of them? I would attack the Arcanized Soul Priest, so then it gives you more chances to hit the Vulgin a couple times. Sure, sure, sure. But and then uh, at least you're clearing off one for sure. Well, here's the thing. Math combat-wise, you have two shots, uh, three targets... And one meat creature at one health and one at four health. What's the probability of clearing both? But also, what's the probability of clearing find, none? Find X and what's show the, your work. What's the probability of clearing <laughs> none? Is that who's is, playing? Is Raynad playing? <laughs> then it's 100%. Um, Alright, I, I think you can get away with smacking Dr. Boom here. Unless he just passes. Man mode! Backspace Whoa. is gonna get. This close to the face, and I have my, my palm right to my nose. He really does. Not even blink. <laughs> he's getting in the face of Waifu, and Waifu looks like he's in a defensive posture, at least uh, by his webcam. Yeah. And Backspace is in a very aggressive posture with his sad so, eyes. You know what it is? Backspace, uh, <laughs> he wants to go for a kill again with the Gromash. Like, these Boombots have to do damage directly. He oh, wants wow. it. He yeah. wants it to. He like even if he spends his turn mind controlling. That or like he can't, he can't kill off his Akunai essentially, so he can't heal. So no matter how he deals with this, he's at 19 effective health. If both Boombots do maximum damage, or just five combined. Yeah. Two to three. Yep. Which is exactly 50% expected value. Yep. These Actually, nods. that's crazy. If it does exactly 50% like the expected value. Of damage, then uh, he wins this game. Oh, he's gonna take one. Ah, now it comes down to. Uh... Oh, it did four damage. It 
did. That's a bright side. Because that Cabal Shadow Priest will get caught. Ooh, a Whirlwind. I don't know. A lot of complicated battle combat math with how things work now. Yeah. So, how do you deal with this board? You can utilize Whirlwind. Ah, you don't need to. You can Brawl. Brawl feels bad, but I guess You've I guess gone through okay. a lot of creatures for the for the priest. So true, true. Here we go. If Fulgen comes out, he's going to be one sad puppy. Nah. There we go. Boom. One damage. <laughs> there goes your armor, sucker. Okay. Yeah, you gotta kill this. Well, not in a, you don't have to, but you've been holding on to that death by charge for so long. Well, it's not that you have to attack because you held it, but it, the Alcanized Soul Priest represents too much of a threat. Yeah. In a in a vacuum of inactivity, priest or a warrior beats fatigue in the in the long run because your armor can stack and healing can. I think Backspace recognizes he's gonna have to wait for Alexstrasza again to come. Yeah. But this is where Waifu has played really intelligent with his resources. Yeah, and he also drew into another activator for Grom. So, knowing that, he's can be a little bit more liberal with how he spends his charge. Absolutely. That by charge. He's hoping that this would draw out another removal if he has Shadow or Death, but Waifu is out. So the shield man could end up going a pretty long way. Unless he feels tempted to use his ultimate removal, but I don't think he can. No. Can he? Mm. Brian Kibler last week in the Legendary Mind Series five used five. two Mind Controls in his deck. I don't know if... Uh, I don't think Wave was playing two Mind Controls. I don't think so either. Oh, we've been through his whole deck, I think. Feels like it. Uh, we. It's. Uh, he got to fatigue and think in one of the games earlier mm. against Forsen. Maybe? Kibler? Kibler did No, Waifu I'm talking about. Oh. He went through the fatigue uh, with his Jaraxxus deck. Oh, okay. Okay. Then we haven't seen his old deck. But yeah, I, I can agree with you. He's really you might have to turn. ignore this and push on through. Like, attack and heal. <laughs> yep. Mm. Oh. That's pretty good. But I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd do it now. Why not? Just, I think Slice Bulge was fine in this spot. The challenge is the 5-1. Yeah, but you just used a lot of resources to kill that 5-1. Or to bring that 5-1 to 1 health to challenge the North Shark Lair. I mean, nothing's perfect in life. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. You could give that out for any play. I might. We'll okay. see. Oh, Mind Control is a prime target. Or, sorry, Sylvanas is a prime target for Mind Control. He also has silence available to him. But if he silences, he doesn't really have he doesn't have any other way to do anything with the silence. He could ignore it and hope to draw into an answer for it. That's true. Silence is only like half the battle with Sylvanas. Yeah. I think five five bodies so hard. I think Sylvanas is a fantastic mind control target. Right. And backspace is totally cool because he has a shield slam. So uh, now it becomes to whether or not he draws Alex Straza. The mind control, the the Shadow Word Deaths. Ooh, that is a howl. that's a good card. He can shield slam and whoa. Well, I guess he's not afraid of anything, but he should be oh. afraid of the BGH. The thought stolen BGH. The BGH has a BFG. Oh man, and this is going to take away. Ah oh, this is going to be really rough. Well, it's I guess it's like another removal piece. Like, how does? How does Waifu deal with Alex Strauss now? <laughs> Backspace is like, what? <laughs> he plays BGH in his priest deck? Of course, uh, we know that that was thought stolen. Yeah, yeah. If he was keeping track, he would have known that it's, that was thought stolen. It's kind of hard to keep a track, you know? It's very hard, especially as cards are flying out of the hand. Yep. The yep. big MVP of this match will be Gore Howl. Yes, it will. Because um, it's so, it's a way to like kill off all these cards and not have to worry about anything. And then it makes it so once Alex Shaza does come out, there won't be really any cards on the on the field to be able to challenge it. And since you already know Definitely. you've been through my control, you've been through BGH, which you never even thought was a possibility. Um, 
One Shadow or Death? One Shadow or Death. Yeah. Although some Priest players have cut Shadow or Death because you do have yeah. Shrink Meisters now. Yeah. You can rotate Shadow Word Pain in. The same five health creatures or five attack creatures that you needed to use Shadow Word Death on, you can use it with Shadow Word Pain. Yeah. And with more cards being added into the deck, you have to find right. cuts somewhere. It gives you flexibility. Yeah. So they, yeah, usually cutting one. I wonder what the um, the card count is in terms of the, the cards remaining. Can we look? Four cards remain for Priest, eight for Warrior. Whoa. Sylvanas doesn't feel very good here because he just gets sniped by the Vorhal. Yeah. You're starting to put pressure on in that in that situation. The idea is to drain the Gorhal before Salvanas can come out. So maybe you'd use Light of Naru here. So that way you, you get can, a light, um, light Warden. Light Warden so you can bait out another like opportunity to to like do damage. Yeah. And and hopefully the the Light Warden can bait out enough uh, Gorhal hits that Sylvanas will be safer. You just need to use two more hits to get that out of range. And in your backspace, do you care if your opponent's drawing cards anymore? You just kill the BGH, right? It's not yeah. a high priority. Yeah, just just getting closer to fatigue, which you're pretty sure that this match is going to go to anyway. Sure. Uh, he does his Alex Straza, so he still has it left somewhere in that deck. Seven cards remaining. It's one of those seven cards. Backspace playing this pretty efficiently resource-wise. Gonna draw here. Waifu picks up Alkanai oh. number two. This one can be used as a nuke option. Um, you can use the Light of Nairu and then uh, Hero Power. Or you could circle. Yeah, you could circle, but I think the Light of Nairu is here is like super useful. Yeah. Oh, a circle of healing. Is he? I guess he's gonna save it for the fatigue battles. Yeah, it's like another heal tool post yeah. Alex Straza. Yeah, definitely is. Yeah, and I don't know how much use the Circle of Healing is gonna get as this game progresses. Whirlwind value. Oh, am I unstable? Cool. Well, interesting. Does he have many creatures left to be able to get these charges from the Gorhal out? Wow. He's got Holy Smite. Uh, I don't. I mean, he's got one creature in hand, Sylvanas. But does he have le any more left in his deck? He's only got, what, two cards yep. left? So he's going to have to play that so Solanus eventually. What if you silence this thing and then hero power and kill it off? Hmm. Is that appropriate use of silence, you think? You would only be saving your, your Arcanine. Arcanine. But then that might only get Only saving your Arcanine. It's so good. Arcanine You're saving so your Arcanine good. with one health, though. It's, it's still a charge off of Gorhal, three damage to the face, and two power, two damage to the hero power. That's true. I guess in this situation, he'd really be uh, it'd be another step in sort of protecting that Sylvanas once it comes down. All right, so Light of Nehru comes out here. Oh, so he doesn't even have to. Okay. He doesn't even have to uh, trade in the, the Northshire Cleric. All right, I'm feeling like we're going to make a call to the mailman. I think so. I think so. I'm sensing it. This game is coming down to the wire. It's really close. That could be a good tool the longer this game goes. Oh, uh, shield maiden, I suppose, then. Can you use the bomb lobber as like a way to actually do damage? <laughs> <laughs> but there's only Sylvanas remaining in the deck. Is this his lot? No, he's going to be two cards there remaining. There has to be like another Dark Cultist or something. Yeah, he's only got two cards remaining. Second to last one is a Sludge, Sludge Belcher. Belcher. That's good. It's a pretty decent card, especially considering that Gorehouse at four attack now. Yeah. That's not too bad, because he'll be able to use the Shield Maiden to, to do some work on that thing, on that puppy. Yeah, I don't know. I think the Sludge Belcher here is your best option. You have to drag this out into Fatigue, but the problem is your opponent's at five uh, cards remaining while you're at one. It's a shame that so he... So you're four turns ahead. It's a shame that he thought stole the, the shield slam. Yeah, but he got BGH. Like, how... That's like... That's like as good as another Shadow Word Death. Well, it's basically like he never run... R r ran Thought Steal and r ran BGH instead. It's Steal a whirlwind effect with Pyromancer. He just never found a place for it. Yeah. 
There's never an opportunity to utilize that effect. Yeah. No, you're right. It, it, it is a shame, in a sense, but... Uh, I guess he'd rather have the Shield Slam and not need it. Wait, is his last card a second, second Thought Steal? No, that's not bad if that's the case. Depends on what backspace draws. Hmm. <laughs> second <laughs> Fire War. Right? That's not good. So troll. Oh, but he can use the Bomb Lobber here and save his Shield Maiden. Yep. Yes! That echo effect. I think you gotta attach this, um, you gotta attack this and then armor up. You're still saving this big game hunter, right? Yeah. It's your final minion, say. I mean, Priest is out of cards. <laughs> the uh, last card in his deck that, is Power Shield. I think he's gotta play Sylvanas, but that's it. Then he doesn't have any more answers. I think that would, that's, I don't think he can win the game from this point. Yeah, because if he plays Sylvanas, then uh, these minions simply trade and plays BGH, he big he uh, Holy Novas, but he's already taking three fatigue damage and then Warrior can just draw Alex Straza and win. Not even, he just he has weapons in his hand, so Yeah, but I mean he'll be able to outgun him. He's got twelve damage of weapons, you're right. Yeah. He's also got Alex Straza though. Yeah. This one was quite the the nail biter, but we came down to it and Backspace is able to stay alive. One to two. I don't really see a way for Waifu to climb out of this. Hover over, hovers over the shield slam. <laughs> Thinking, what can I do? Make it hard. Speak to me, shield slam. Tell me. It's like, concede and move on, man. <laughs> it's like, but Sylvanas, she doesn't love you anymore. Yeah, and I, Waifu, it, we said it earlier, but it's getting late over there, so... Keeping himself in the game is only a disadvantage for him. I don't think he's going to outlast backspace as far as, like, unless the he's going, IRL fatigue uh, goes. Unless he's going for the slow roll. Trying to mess with backspace. Yeah. Like, backspace actually doesn't have to do anything. <laughs> he can just, like, attack, weapon up, and then armor up and pass. Yeah. Because the onus, the onus is on Waifu to produce something to be threatening. Yeah. Because this attack gives him the life lead. And he's also going to be forever in the life lead. Because uh, he's not going to shield block unnecessarily. Wait, can he, he, can, he, can he utilize Power Word Shield? Why? To put his Sylvanas out of range of being killed by what's on the board. I guess it wouldn't matter. Mm, in the long run. Maybe. I am a little perplexed why Waifu's waiting so long, because he's the one with the burden of uh, burden of proof. Like, prove that me that you can still win this game. All right. Okay. Okay. That could have happened a couple turns ago. Maybe he's a little masochistic and he just wanted the warrior attack him a few times. Yeah, I like it. Hit yeah. Me. <laughs> Waifu's kinky, man. I guess so. So uh, going into game four, now we enter the blind pick stage. Uh, anything goes. Whatever these guys want to play is completely free to them. Uh, based off the lineups, though, do you have any suggestions or predictions? Um. Okay, so Waifu is running Hunter, Warlock, Priest. And... Hmm. Maybe Head Priest. scratcher. Yeah, that's tough. Well, uh, we have Paladin Warrior and uh, Paladin Warrior and Hunter on the other side. I think the the Warrior is pretty vanilla on the opposite side because you know Warrior can handle its own against Handlock. Yeah. And then if you think your opponent's going to be playing that, you can answer with. I guess if you we if might see the same match. Priest versus Warrior. Yeah. I think Warlock Handlock's versus okay. Okay. But well, I, I think feel like. Priest would have been okay too. I like Priest uh, better against Hunter, but I'm not sure about the Priest Paladin matchup. Especially recently. That's not a matchup that I'm too familiar with with the new cards. Okay. It's tough for me to think about uh, what type of advantage. Well, I, I, I went with Warrior for backspace. Yeah. I, did, I did half the job here. Okay. And I went with Priest, so I tried to close, do half the job, close, but close. failed. Close. Uh, well, uh, here we go into game number four and see if Backspace can turn around. Uh, the Handlock versus Warrior matchup, pretty tightly contested. 
But Backspace, the most important thing going into this game four, is he knows his handlock. Yeah. No mistake about it. So that gives him a little bit of advantage that he didn't have uh, in that first matchup where he didn't know if it was it was Zuor handlock. Mm -hmm. And he actually got really close to coming in on top of that uh, match, if you recall. Yeah, I do. I do. Ah, uh, well, I mean, I guess he wanted a better hand than that, but one Twilight Drake's okay. Yeah. Everything else, he wanted to have proactive threats. The way Handlock can get an easy advantage or even a win is if it takes the initiative and then uh, Warrior can't respond to it. Yeah. That's a great... This is a pretty good opening hand, I think, for for the Warrior in this matchup because he's got BGH for Giant. Yeah. He's got the Cruel Taskmaster Execute for Twilight Drakes. Sure. He most likely wants a silence, too, in case for the... Like, if you can get away with using... Of saving your executes. Is he running a silence? I would have to imagine so. I don't remember from last game if he is or not. I can't remember if we saw an owl. But, uh, yep, no other option here, so. I'm gonna go ahead and execute this, and not too much of a follow up play here for Waifu. Doesn't have any other Drakes, doesn't have Giants. Oh, he's got a Defender of Argus, but I think he can tap in Sun Fury Protector. Yeah. Yeah, feels pretty bad, but it's something to challenge the board, and also you can't hold more than 10 cards, so you need to get rid of it. <laughs> oh, right on time. Bomb Lobber value. This is, this pretty is good. why you tip your mailman. Because <laughs> they're always on time. Because they might kill Sun Fury Protectors for you. That's right. Again? They're always on time. There's definitely a sponsor somewhere there, like available, like if DHL or FedEx want to get involved in Hearthstone. Yeah. You can just show them the, the, the bomb lobber. What they would only that bomb lobber was brought to you by. They would only sponsor players that ran bomb, lo bomb lobbers in their decks. If they sponsored a team, they would, no, the team would be they could, forced. They could sponsor the bomb lobber moment. Of the, day. Like the <laughs> logo just comes in. Actually, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. What if nobody plays a bomb lobber that day, though? Ah, oh, well then, uh, it's okay. We'll just have to do it again in the special show match. Mortal Coil on the 1-1 actually brings him closer to Molten Giants, hilariously enough. Oh, man. He can actually play Molten right after here. That's so funny. Does he want to, though? Probably wants to play Sludge Belcher. But, I'm just, but it's just funny that he did enough damage yeah. for him to exactly play it. Yeah. Oh, he has Beat Game Hunter as well. I don't, for, I don't see that's a bad play, either. Nope. Killing off Dr. Boom is really good, because if your opponent does have a silence, you're not sure if you get pressed through for a lot of damage. Yeah. So even though he's not drawing into some of those big early threats, he's still in a relatively good position. Sure. Um, but he really needs to draw into those, because the Mountain Giants, the longer the game goes on, the less effective they're going to be. All right, Boombots, do your thing. Show me what two, you got. Two or more damage to either creature. Oh, no. <laughs> it does four damage. Wow. That's... that's Really funny, man. <laughs> Hello, Molten Giants. Oh, man. Oh, he's got Brawl, though, so it's okay. Um, he can tap and double Molten when Doombots attack. Uh, let's see. Waifu has a few options here. He can play a little bit more defensive. He can start placing his threats. The big thing on his mind, though, is how do he deal with his explosive sheep without killing your minions unnecessarily? I don't think you do. So how do you go about this then? Life tap. I think you just have to sack while chip off his armor. I th Yeah, I think I'm okay with playing a Molten Giant here. Yeah. Maybe even two. You're not a... F oh yeah, that's okay. You're not extending too much because... You don't have anything else on the board besides Molten Giants. So. Well, I mean, it's 16 damage on the board. Like. Well, I, I was thinking about the the opportunity of playing around Brawl, but this is good. This is a guaranteed killing both these Molten Giants. Basically, oh, two cards Oh, Molten Giant wins! <laughs> what a surprise! Gotta get that caster hype in. And, uh... You're doing it wrong, DJ. <laughs> Calculated play. Molten Giant's gonna survive. Herp derp. I guess Backspace won the 50-50 there. 
Things are looking up for the me new member of Archon. He's, he, he's Kappa. He's had, some <laughs> he's had some bad luck today. All right, well, he feels like now is the time to Draxus. Both Molten Giants gone. Never little a surprise. better time than this. He definitely could have slowed it down a little bit. But if there's a cool Taskmaster that comes to the hand soon, then that's threatening lethal in the next couple of turns. Waifu does have really defensive maneuvers, though. He's got two Sludge Belchers. He can weave it in throughout this uh, process of Infernals. And he's also got some life gain. Yeah. He could Siphon Soul, Twilight Drake Siphon Soul this turn and kill the Accolade of Pain. And uh, he'd be one out of range of Gromish Cool Taskmaster. So that feels like the best line of play for me. Because playing down the Sledge Belchers right now, yep. it's okay, because it's still going to protect you from the combo, but... Oh, okay, so he's going to go for this play. Well, he can he can be pretty reckless with how much he builds up his board, because he knows that the Brawl is out of the way. Yeah. What I really like about this post Jirax's hand is there's a lot of taunts. Yeah. And there's the, <laughs> the Corker on Elite. I mean, it might be the game-ending damage. You laugh. But it might be like an MVP here. <laughs> He's got a lot of taunts to get through before he even can think about putting damage on the face. This bomb lobber could be big too if he can get a nice execute off. Who would you want the here bomb lobber to go on? The, the Twilight Drake? Here comes the mailman! Oh! <laughs> what was that? <laughs> that, was <just> oh. <laughs> that was my. That's what the, I don't know. It's like what happens when a goblin looks over your shoulder and you open up a legendary pack. It's like, oh, Dr. Boom. I have no words, Rodan. I have no words. I'll just, I'll stop. I, I, un I, I understood what you meant, though, man. It's like one of those moments like, ah. Uh, What's it going to hit? Because the bomb lobber is like a fake out, man. The way it shoots the, it shoots the bomb. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very high rainbow arc. <laughs> Thanks for trying to come up for an excuse for that. <laughs> what came out of my mouth right now? <laughs> Don't worry. Anything silly that's coming out of your mouth, I definitely have something three times more silly. I'd like to play that game one day. So he's just used his execute. Gosh. That's, that's really painful. He just used his execute. But, I mean, you already had to do it. Um, to go on. Wow, what a great Corcoran Elite, oh, I have to say. I mean, you said instead of playing that, what would you have played instead of Corcoran? Uh, Piloted Shredder. Oh, Piloted Shredder. Yeah, I guess you're right. Piloted Shredder would have been better in this scenario. In every scenario. I still think the Corcoran Elite's cute. <laughs> yeah. It's It's got uh, some, some cases where it's quite a bit better than, than Piloted Shredder. Because it has immediate effect on the board. Right. Um, the fact that uh, Backspace doesn't have Harrison Jones too for um, for like the Jaraxxus is also pretty painful. Yeah. And the longer it, it goes that he doesn't draw into it, then um, the less effective it's going to be in the end. Because he's already getting, he's already gotten yeah. so much value out of. Well, you know, Backspace is going to call it quits, and that's going to do it for the series. Doesn't even want to prolong it any longer. And uh, that's going to do it. Waifu takes the Series 3-1 and is guaranteed to go into next week wow. uh, with a chance to win some big points. So Backspace, unfortunately, his journey ends here. But, you know, ends up winning a Series, losing a Series. Pretty decent showing. Um, unfortunate that he wasn't able to go through. But yeah. at the same time, this is paving the way for a newcomer to be on people's radar. Yeah, so once again, uh, very impressed that another one of our, our open Sunday uh, brackets... Uh, made all the way through uh, to the to today, and then made it all the way through to the top two to make it back to next week. So, very impressed. Yeah, well done. Well, done. let's take a look at the bracket to see what's happened so far. As we have one more series of the day: Dog versus Frozen. Keep in mind, again, the top two advance to next week, where they can uh, get a chance to play for points. But next yeah. week is where we start also directly seeding people to the finals in yes. February. So it gets exciting. Yeah. Uh, the top two seeds from last week were Silent Storm and Powder. Uh, but this week we have Waifu and the winner of Dog versus Frozen. Yeah, and Silent Storm and Powder, they did fall in the first round. But 
uh, or yeah, well, Powder was actually a stand-in for for Brian Kilber, but still was invited back to this week. They fell in the first round, but they did get a chance to compete, and of course, mm -hmm. did see Silent Storm last week. And unfortunately, he did fall in the first round, but he's still one of my favorite players. I'm a fan. Sure, sure. So uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to have more action here. Quick shout-out to the people who make this possible, by the way, Crucial and Western Digital. You can check them out at esl.gg forward slash Newegg Esports. When we return, our last match of Week 4 here at the Legendary Series. Stay tuned, guys. More action will be coming right after this.